think they got a fright, just as much of a fright as I did. And there they are. So they've actually, they're moving. And it definitely is amber eyes and the youngest lioness, because I can only see two of them here. So they've moved probably about 150, 200 meters from where the guides saw them um, earlier on today. And Amber Eyes did a big loop. She went through that drainage system and I think to the other spot. So whatever they killed, I'm not sure what they killed. I think somebody said a, a young kudu. They would have gobbled that up almost instantaneously in, a f in literally a few minutes. The two of them, they look hungry. There's just paws now and a tail every now and then. Now I just want to call it in very quickly. No, no I can't because there's people talking on the radio. But yeah, here they are sleeping. Let me see if I can reposition again, Exy. Let me see if I go if I go a little bit over here. Maybe they've Oh, that would have been interesting. Stuck in a lion sighting with a car that won't start. Wouldn't be the first time. Yes, I think we're gonna get a good spot here. See, thankfully they've obviously been rolling around on this long grass and they've managed to flatten the ground a little bit. Is that alright, Exy? Yes, the hole's not too much in the way. But there they are. There's amber eyes. Looks like amber eyes, yes. And then the youngest lioness is the one with her feet in the air. And it'll be interesting to see how full they are. I don't know how old that kudu was, but this is the breeding season for kudu now, or the birthing season. So I can't imagine that it would have been a very big kudu, probably even a newborn. Mom maybe just hiding it away, and then that really just would have been a little snack for these two. And it's almost actually a good thing that they separated from the pride, because if they'd caught it with all five lionesses and six cubs, they would have just had one mouthful each, I could imagine. Like, I don't even think the cubs would have had their, sh had their even their share, because moms would have dived in, teeth first, tearing apart at it. But look at this, completely camouflaged, and that they were when they were laying flat in the grass. I'm going to just call the sighting in again now. The mobiles have relocated on the two Nkuhuma females just off Jay's link, quite close to Gary Main Triple M. One on lock, space for two. Now, I don't know if anybody can copy me, but there we go. We just did call it in. Jay J Mew 2000, you're wondering uh, which pride of lions is this, and, and welcome to you. I believe that you are new to Safari Life, so thank you for asking questions, and I look forward to hearing your name more often. Well, these are two of the Nkuhuma lionesses, so they uh, form a part of five females. The other three, I'm not sure exactly where they are, but let's have another look at the lions, just because uh, they seem to be getting on the move now, and I don't want to lose them. We saw how quickly it is to lose them. And they've got six cubs. They've, well, they had eight, unfortunately, and then we lost two. Um, but that is also quite normal out here, is that young animals, uh, it really is tough, and particularly for the predators. So these two have split off, uh, and we don't know if they're going to leave the pride forever. I don't think so. Whether they are pregnant, I'm also not certain. They're going to have full bellies now, but I definitely haven't seen any increase in the size of their mammary glands. We, we had a decent look at Amber Eyes this morning. We haven't seen the youngest in Guhuma Lioness. Now going towards the, the cut line, let's watch this one. A mobiles, the Timofuzzy and Gala are now mobile back towards Triple M Gauri Main Junction from Jay's Link, one unlock. Just try and keep these guys updated. Or is that Amber Eyes? I'm confused now. No, I think this is the youngest girl. Look at us, please. Smile with your big teeth. It looks like yellow, and I think I can see a pinkish nose. And she's got very clean teeth as well. That's also another way you can age lines. You can see there isn't much staining on her teeth at all. They look quite white and look nice and sharp as well. Yes, thank you. That's kind of her. Very kind of her. All these cars that are driving around on Gauri Main now, they're surely going to pop into... The other lioness, just having a quick groom, and you can see there. You see what she's doing? There's lots of ticks at the moment with all the grass. I think this is amber eyes. 
And the other one was not amber eyes, but for some reason her eyes look that sort of reddish color, but it isn't. My apologies. So that was the youngest one. This is amber eyes here, having a good scratch. So they're a bit annoyed at the moment with the flies, with all of the ticks that are around them. They're going to be grooming a lot more <coughs> than they normally would, just to try and get them off. And you can see, look how she's stretching her legs so far back to actually try and reach an itchy spot. Right, ready to follow lines? Goodness gracious, look at those big bellies. They've definitely had a good feed. But no swollen mammary glands yet. Right. Let's go through here. Now, Lorena, you're wondering how old the youngest Nguhuma lioness is. Oh my goodness, we're gonna draw. It's really cool the way they flatten the grass here. I, I reckon she's probably about four years old, maybe three and a half. Um, she's not exceptionally young. Maybe she's a little bit younger than that. I've completely forgotten exactly her age, but she's only a few years old. Uh, I think the others are between about eight and ten, if I'm not mistaken. I've actually got the ages written down in my book. We'll have a look at some point. But let's follow the lions for now, because you never know where these two are going to go. Here they are. What I'll do is I'm just going to park. And we'll just quickly watch them. There we go here. Now we've got a question from Rebecca, who's directing the show today. She's wondering if I think that they would ever form a breakaway pride. It's not impossible. There's definitely an opportunity for them to. And it wouldn't surprise me. Sorry, I'm just having a look at this lioness. She's got all the scratches on her back. I wonder who she's been in a battle with. Um, it can definitely happen. And I, 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 you know, I'm so, I don't, I don't even know. I, I don't know these lions well enough. I mean, when I arrived, they wouldn't leave each other's side. And as, as soon as the cubs started to get a little bit older, I don't know if it's because it's getting a bit crowded around kills, especially now at this time of the year when they aren't particularly big animals around example the buffalo which they feed on almost predominantly right through winter so that could be a reason as to why they may be splitting off a little bit is just because there's just too much competition at the carcass also when the Birmingham come in and you've seen the way that they behave and they treat the lionesses they're quite rough most of the time with the exception of Mfumo how he sometimes woos the girls which is quite nice to see um, but we also don't know what's wrong with Amber Eyes because she's definitely been seen mating with the Birminghams on numerous occasions. But she's never taken and she hasn't had cubs. And it must be a bit stressful for her because I'm pretty sure if we have new male lions that come in, they might not be so tolerant, especially if they're, say, older boys and a bit more experienced. She could run the risk of being killed. The nice thing with the Birmingham boys is that because they're so young, and it's their first sort of lot of girls that they've been mating with, they don't really know any different. And I, I saw the same thing with the Charlsons. They got bossed around quite a bit by the Southern Pride because, again, young, inexperienced males, they don't know any better, so they just sort of do what they're told, really. But as they get older, they'll learn, they'll become less tolerant and become more and more aggressive to the females, especially if they start to sort of say, you know, um, put up a fight when it comes to mating. Um, then it can get very, very rough, and there's no point in keeping, in a male lion's mind, there's no keep point in keeping a lioness alive um, if she's not willing to mate with them, um, and that's what happens on quite a regular basis. So we'll have to see. Let's not jump to conclusions just yet. Let's let the scenario play out a bit. Like I said, it could change again when there's more food availability. Not to say that there's not a lot of food at the moment. It's just lots of impala. Oh, listen. I'm going to move forward. The other lioness is calling. So I just want to get a view of both of them again. I'm trying to get it that my lights stay on. There we go. Sorry, Rebecca. Please may I have the name again? There we go. Let's look at this other lion. She's trying to roar. Can you hear that? Can you 
she's doing very, very sort of soft contact calls and then just doing a half-hearted attempt at a roar. Now, Cindy, Anna, you're wondering, let's see if she's going to call again. I apologise, she's sitting quite far away from us and my spotlight is not quite powerful enough to reach her. Now she's gone quiet. So Cindy Anna, sorry, you've asked, oh, she keeps calling, come on girl, do us a big call. you can all hear that it's very very soft I think she's looking for the other lionesses so sorry Cindy and you're wondering what is the youngest age that a lioness can give birth it depends I, I would say around three three and a half uh, maybe even as young as as two and a half but I think that's quite young and that first set of cubs might not survive so I think in in order for them to have a successful litter I would say between three and three and a half years old that's typically the age that we see but they start coming into estrus just after about two and a half years old or just around there but again every line is different the same as people some come into estrus or some animals come into estrus earlier it just depends on their development and also their surroundings, their environmental surroundings. If there's, of course, lots of uh, food around, lots of water, all those types of things. Now there's another vehicle coming and I'm sure that they're going to join us, but we'll follow these girls. It's very bumpy along here. I think they're going the wrong way though. I think the rest of the Nkuhumas are actually down that side from, from what I could hear on the radio. Now, I don't want to drive around like we did with the Birmingham last night just because these girls seem to be a little bit sketchy. They seem fine now, but this morning we noticed that Amber Eyes wasn't too happy with the cars. So I don't want to bother them too much and go rearing in some of this thick stuff. So we'll just wait until we can get an opportunity to pass them and then hopefully uh, we'll get a front view. But for now, we'll just follow these girls and see where they go, really. But it'll be interesting to see if they do form a breakaway pride and if they do good for them. They seem to do very well, just the two of them. Uh, they definitely have a stronger bond between these two than the others. There could have also been a dispute that has happened uh, amongst the pride and that's caused a split. I, I don't think we quite realize how sensitive these animals are at times. And I know there's another car behind me that there's very little we can do at the moment. So we also just follow the lines until they decide to pull off of the road. And hopefully they go east into Juma. We've got Juma on the side. We've got Arethusa on. No, we don't have Arethusa on the right anymore. Well, we may. I don't actually know. I can't remember which property is over here. Let me jump and pull off the side of the road a little bit. We're going to have to give these other guys a turn. There they go. Well, they're walking, walking, they're jumping quite far ahead of us, so we will try and uh, get a closer look again. And oh, no, they've just sat down on the road. I'm going to try and pull off this car, you know what, it's an absolute nightmare, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to be kind to the vehicle behind me, but unfortunately the gradient of the road is not allowing for this. So we're just going to have to wait until the road eases up a little bit, and then we'll give these guys a chance. I'm not too worried, I'm pretty sure they've been to the other Nguhuma sighting already. We haven't seen lions yet, so we'll just have a quick look. So we're going to see if we can get around them and give these guys another chance, but it seems as though James has finally made his way back to Juma. Let's go back across to him and see what his plans are.